Good morning, Issam. I'm Josh. And I'm So. I'm sure all of you remember the infamous trial last year of the 17-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse, who was shot and killed two men and wounded the third in the protest of Kenosha. This event occurred on August 25th of 2021 and was sparked by the shooting of Jacob Blake, a black man who was shot several times by police in front of his young children. Today we're going to discuss the trial and the final verdict. First in our top stories. A CNY bus driver has been charged with a DWI. Driver David E. Wines of West Monroe has been charged with an aggravated DWI, a felony, and a misdemeanor charge. In the bus, Wines was driving 55 children and 47 of them were ages 15 and younger. Wines was found with a blood alcohol content of 0.09% and the legal limit for bus drivers is 0.04%. A 39-year-old man reported he was robbed and attacked with a golf club Monday night on the city's near west side. At about 8.20 p.m., the man was walking in the 300 block of Gifford Street when two men, one with a golf club, approached and robbed him. The man armed with a golf club hit the 39-year-old man multiple times and stole the radio. Then the two men then fled. The 39-year-old man suffered a cut to the head and was taken to Community Upstate Hospital in Syracuse, police said. He is expected to survive. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There is a DECA States meeting that can be attended either Wednesday, January 19th or Thursday, January 20th in room B4 at 325. The meeting will cover the co cost of states and payments and deadlines and forms that need to be completed. You have qualified for states if you have completed the DECA project, if you received an award from regionals, and if you participated in the principal's event at regionals. If you have any questions, please see Mr. Anselm in B4. There are a lot of important information that occurred leading up to these shootings. Two hours before the first shooting, Kyle Rittenhouse was seen being interviewed at a car dealership in Kenosha. He explained that he was only attending the protest as a medic to help others. Shortly after this interview, Kyle was chased by an unknown mob at the protest. As Rittenhouse is being chased by the unknown group, an unknown gunman fires. It says Rittenhouse turned towards the sound of the gunfire and was lunged by this un unknown gunman who we now know is Joseph Rosenbaum. Rittenhouse shot Rosenbaum four times, once in the head, which killed him. After the first shooting, Rittenhouse was charged at, and he fired four more shots, one that hit Anthony Huber in the chest. Huber is said to have believed Rittenhouse was an active shooter and aim at him to, aim at him to by anti-protect himself and others. The third and final victim of the shooting was Gage Groshowitz, who was shot in the aim, Groshowitz had multiple pro protests also with the sole purpose of providing medical care as he was a paramedic after high school for a short time. We'll talk about the trial after weather. Today on Wednesday we'll have a high of 40 and a low of 13 degrees and today's going to be mostly cloudy and windy to start the day but as the day pro progresses later and later those clouds and wind will turn to snow just this green glob you see behind uh, beside me and then overnight is going to have some more lake light lake snow showers with the possible accumulation of an inch or two. Thursday will have a high of 18 and a chilly low of negative 5 degrees and Thursday will carry on the snow effects showers from tonight. Friday will have a high of 11 and a low of negative 4 degrees, once again being very chilly like Thursday and will mainly be cloudy with some flurries here and there. And with that, I'm Grayson with your Wednesday morning weather. Kyle Rittenhouse was arrested at the morning after the shooting on August 26, and the next day he was charged with five felonies and a misdemeanor, including two counts of intentional homicide. On January 5th of 2021, Rittenhouse pledged not guilty to the charges, and 10 months later, the trial began on Monday, November 1st of 2021. Here are some interviews of some members of the ESM community. Okay, go. Okay, why were you so interested in this particular trial? 
Uh, it had elements of everything that I teach in the class. So that was one of it. Uh, we were, it had to do with gun control. It had to do with the Constitution. It had to do with state laws. And it had to do with, you know, what this person should be charged with. And it was also interesting because we could actually go through the trial with the results and talk about the results and the, and the way the trial was conducted and some mistakes that were made in it. So it was happening live, so I thought everybody, and the age of the defendant as well, I thought it was more relatable. Yes? Do you believe that Kyle Rittenhouse was guilty? I maintain all the time that the courts work. So I, I want to say that he's not guilty because that's what the courts uh, found him to be. Um, if we lose that, if we lose faith in the courts or if we feel that they're not working, we, we, we definitely have a major problem in our hands, yeah. Rittenhouse trial went on for 15 days and the verdict was finally reached on the fourth day of deliberations. If Rittenhouse were to be declared guilty, he would have faced life in prison. There are many different opinions on this trial and on whether Kyle should have been released. Ben Crump, a civil rights attorney who represented George Floyd, called Rittenhouse a racist homicidal vigilant who, like so many white men before him, not only escaped accountability but laughed in his face. Many believe Rittenhouse wasn't using his weapon for self-defense and deserves to be charged. Meanwhile, Rittenhouse spokesman says, I'll believe that there was cerebral and they thought about every piece of the jury instructions. He said, so the justice was done for Kyle. He gets to live life as a free young man. Syracuse men's basketball team beat Clemson 91-78 last night. Buddy Bayheim and Joe Girard combined for 47 points on the night. The boys' bowling team beat Oswego 3-0 last night. Ryan Buffum contributed 649 points, and Charlie Houston contributed 584 points to secure the team's victory. The girls' basketball team plays at Cortland at 6.30 tonight. The boys' basketball team plays Cortland at 6.45, and the girls' volleyball team plays VVS at 7. And I'm Tanner with your sports. In the end, Kyle Rittenhouse was acquitted of all charges. That's all we have for you today. So for me, Josh, and everyone here at The Morning Show, have a great day.